We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you for seeing us through the night and you've woken us up again this morning. We thank you for your strength. We know that you have invigorated us for another day's activity. Lord, we are grateful and we say thank you. As we start this morning, chapel, we ask, oh God, that you will speak to our hearts. As we worship you, we ask that our praise will arise and will ascend to you as a sweet-smelling sacrifice. Thank you for every one of our friends that are here today. We ask that you bless them. Amen. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. gathered to, to know Jesus more. That's why we're here. We want to know Jesus in his power, in his resurrection, in his suffering. We want to know Jesus to such a degree that we will live every day of our lives for him because it is worth it. Knowing Jesus is worth it. Let's 
sing the song together. This is our greatest prayer. This is our greatest desire, Lord, that we know you. We have been created to know you. Lord, please help us through study of your word, through obedience to your word, Amen. to know you. Lord, so we just commit the rest of the chapel session into your hands and ask that you help us. Be glorified, Lord Jesus, for it's in Christ's name we've prayed. Please be seated.
Good morning, Hilchrist. Um, so today we have with us the um, some representatives from the school that we are trying to raise money for. So if they could just stand and wave to us so you could see them. Yeah. They won't be able to talk because there's no time, but I will continue to encourage you guys to make teams. I know there have been a lot of teams, especially from middle school, so we thank you for that. And we hope that you guys will get, um, make more teams. And high school, we hope that high school will make more teams. And we love that the teachers are already gathering teams and everything. So if you have more questions, you can come to us and ask. And we continue to encourage you guys and parents. Continue to tell your parents that they can make donations even if they don't want to run. So um, we thank you for the reps coming. Um, it was Her name is Mrs. Wambuta Patu Mercy. So we thank you. She's the principal. And um, we continue to pray that you guys will bring enough money and we'll reach our goal. Thank you. Um, you guys have been doing a good job harassing teachers. Don't stop. Don't stop. We can only say yes or no. So don't stop. Um, just one announcement um, before we receive the word. That we have discipleship this Thursday. Discipleship starts at 3.45. So that means at 3.45, you're at your venue. You're not lollygating. You're not dreaming and strolling. Um, we have 20 minutes from after school to be there. So at 3.45, you're at your venue. If you're not part of discipleship, you have 20 minutes to get out. All right, so uh, we'll invite our speaker to come. Um, let's put our hands together for him. Once again, good morning. How are you today? Uh, how are you today? Okay. Some people will say better than, than yesterday. Um, yesterday, the Lord helped us to, in some very small way, begin to touch on this important subject of who we are. Who we are. Monday, who is God? Yesterday was who we are. Can we do a very small recap again? Who would like to help us remember what we learned yesterday what did what did we learn yesterday anyone and today is a solid promise launch solid promise launch i'll be here all day who'd like to help us recount good i'm praying for you um i learned that god created us in his image and um that That okay, half lunch, half lunch, half lunch. God created us in His image. Yes. I also learned that we should not let TikTok take over our lives. Oh, half lunch. We should not let TikTok take over our lives. Yes, 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 yes. Um, I learned that God told us to take over the uh, well, take over the animals. Yes. And but He didn't give that privilege to any angels or anybody else. Only. Beautiful launch, please. Let's notice three of them seriously. Launch. Yes. God gave authority to all. I mean, to mankind. He didn't give to the angels or animals. Good. He also puts His breath inside all of us. He put His breath inside of us. Launch. Yes. Yes. No lady yet. Yes. Yes. Going, going. Yes. And then we're powerless without God. We are powerless without God. Yes. We can't save ourselves from sin. Only God can save us from sin. Good. So we are sinners. Closed. <laughs> Mrs. Dankyo, please help me note all those who answered correctly. Launch together with me this afternoon. That's a summary of what we learned yesterday. That's a summary. 
We are made in God's image. True. And we should celebrate and revel in that knowledge. Made in God's image. And that's why we can't abuse another or treat others unkindly. They are made in the image of God. Even non-Christians. Please note this. This is a solid basis for Christian missions. That every human being is made in God's image. And should not perish. And after all these wonderful things we said. Yet marred by sin. Marred by sin. So this morning we want to consider another question. Is a whole series of questions this week. The third question for this week. Is why. Why does God save me? Why? Why? Does he save me? And we'll still read Psalm 18. From verse 1, let me ask if any volunteer would like to read this passage for us, please. You could come forward. Psalm 18, verse 1 to 3. Anyone, please feel very free. You come forward and help me read. Psalm 18, 1 to 3. Please come forward. Thank you. Please listen. Listen attentively. Thank you. I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my rock in whom I take refuge. My shield and the horn of my salvation. My stronghold. I call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. And I am safe from my enemies. Thank you. Can you clap for her? So why does God save me? Why did God save David in this passage, in this text? Why? And the answer is in verse 2. Because he is and he can. That's the answer. It is not because of us. It's not because of anything good in us or in me. It is because of him. Is that okay, guys? I guess this sounds very um, sometimes humiliating to us as humans that there is nothing in us that would make God save us. Absolutely nothing in us. Nothing. It's because of him. Why? He is and he can. In other words, it's because he's my God and my rock. That's why he saves me. That's why he saved David. It's because of his steadfast love and mercy. You know what, guys? God is so holy that all of our righteousness put together, even with that of the illustrious Christians who ever walked this earth, great guys like Thomas Aquinas, Augustine, Paul, John Calvin, David Brainerd, all these wonderful men put together, all of our righteousness is filth before a thrice holy God. Holy, holy, holy. We can't even try. Let me ask you guys, which... Okay, don't give an answer to this question. Just keep it in your heart, okay? Which teacher is the hardest to please in your class? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. A, I'm sorry. <laughs> now, it is not that God is hard to please. It is that we can't. Even if he was to give us a, a billion lifetimes, we would not be able to measure up to his righteousness and holiness. We can't. We can't. 
Can we say we can't? We can't. Say it one more time. We can't ever measure up. He's so holy. So God saves the sinner. Not because of anything the sinner does. But only on the basis of the work of his son. Jesus Christ. The righteous. He is righteous. He is holy. And this is so instructive that even in Revelation, when the church is gathered before Christ and the Father and the Holy Spirit, the church does not gather to sing about her achievements. The church sings about him who redeemed us. He who bought us out of every tribe and nation and language and people like we are, we are here today. This is the hope of the gospel that all of us, whether from Pakistan or, or Iraq or the US or Venezuela or South Africa or Congo or Borno State, from all parts of the world, are gathered before the throne of the Lamb. And we will sing and say, you saved us. You redeemed us. You bought us with the precious blood of your son, Jesus Christ. And so Paul said in Titus 3, 5 to 7, let me read that passage very, very instructive. He said, but when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us. Not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior. So that being justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Did you notice something in this text? That we are saved by God our Savior, God the Father. We are saved by the washing of regeneration of the Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit, and that we are saved by Jesus Christ, our Savior. Do you see the triune God clearly reflected in this text? That's the God who saves us, guys. God the Father willed our salvation. God the Son gave himself as that perfect lamb sacrifice, that substitutionary sacrifice for your place, that he in his own body will take the punishment of God for all sinners in all ages and in all times in his own body on that gory tree in Golgotha. And that God the Holy Spirit applies that perfect work to the hearts of all who would believe him. Boy, girl, adult, aged, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. That's the hope of the gospel. So God did not save us because we asked him to. Please note that. No. Our awareness of sin does not translate to knowledge of the depth of our sin. In other words, guys, we can't fully understand the depth of sin. We don't even understand how sinful we are. That's how bad it is. We can't even explain or express exactly how sinful we are only he can and that's why he alone must save us dead men cannot guys resuscitate themselves and to be lost in sin to be a sinner is not to be fainted or in coma it is to be dead in sin that's what the scriptures teach requiring life from the savior 
infused into our spirits, regenerating and changing us into children of God. And then like Paul would say in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. When I was around 16, 17, I was a terror at home. As I stand before you today, and I'm like, you're like, wow, yeah. I was such a terror, my mother would have to report me to the police right here in Joss. Yes, I was a terror. Today I've become a lame duck because of the gospel. That's what it can do. It changed me. It transformed me. Today I drive on the streets of Joss, on the roads of Joss, and you know how we drive in Nigeria. Oh, ah, oh. And I'm like, I don't have the words with which to reply because he saved me. Salvation in Jesus Christ is a radical work that takes out the old nature. That one that longs to displease God Salvation takes it away and gives you a new nature, a new, you become a new person in Christ. Literally. And that's the story of everyone who is here who is saved. We were wretches. Like John Newton said, truly, we were wretches. We mean it. We're not, in fact, for some of you who feel that's so bad, we were, I was, I was, I was, I was worse than many of you. But he saved me. And John Newton wrote and sang, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. The second verse says, "Twas grace that taught, remember, my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear when the hour I first believed. And then as we journey through life, through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. Tis grace had brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. And then eventually, when we've been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise. Than when we first begun. It's grace. Paul said we don't start in grace and end with human works. Our works can't achieve the righteousness of God. So we sing grace, grace. God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse within, oh grace, grace, oh God's grace, grace that is greater than all my sin. So why does he save us? It's just one word. Grace. Grace and grace alone. Martin Luther, that stalwart of the Reformation. Grace. Sola. Gratia. Grace. 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 Grace alone. 
I need no other argument. I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and that he died for me. It is grace extended. And whenever I talk about the gospel, honestly, guys, nothing makes me teary like the gospel. I had my wife is here, I hardly cry until the gospel, the gospel that God will save me. And several of us who are here, that Jesus will die for me and write my name with the ink of his blood in the Lamb's book of life. It's the greatest thing that can ever happen to a human being. And if God is my rock. Paul said, who can lay any charge to God's elect? It is God who justifies. It is God who declares he is forgiven. And when the accuser stands before him and says, Ebenezer does not deserve eternal life. He says, no, the blood of my son covers him and it will cover for you how can we be saved that jailer when the earthquake shook the prison Paul and Silas were kept in Philippi and he thought they had gone he was about to um, um, kill himself took his sword Paul said no don't and he said what must I do to be saved and I repeat those precious words. Acts 16, 31. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. Let us pray. Lord, it's so humbling to know that that you have saved me. It's so humbling for many of us who are here to appreciate the fact that we are saved forever. Saved forever. I pray God for as many who have not known you, I pray that your grace be poured on them. I pray that Lord they will believe. Open their hearts to believe the gospel. This is not the work that anything can do, including myself. Only you. Rock and God. Only you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit can open a man's heart to yourself. So please do this, Lord. From the youngest of us who is here to the oldest, oldest of us who is here. Thank you, Lord. In Christ's name we pray. For those of us who are going to have lunch with me, please um, you'll meet with Mrs. Dankyo later on. We will we'll have a nice time. God bless you. Yeah.